One of the most common questions I get regarding Lychee is how her staff mechanic works. It's one of the most complex drives in the game, and there are many variables surrounding how it actually functions. There are a couple of hidden mechanics with it too that a lot of players actually don't even know about. So hopefully I can shed some light on the inner workings of the mechanic in this video, and I also hope that it provides to be a useful resource for those of you that are wanting to pick her up or wanting to get better at the matchup. So to start off I'll just give a basic rundown of Lychee as a character. She is a hybrid rushdown zoner and set play character. She's also a mode change character. The first mode, which is what she starts every round off in, is the staff equipped mode or the staff mode. In this she has longer range on her normal attacks. They have more startup, but they also have higher damage and more untackable time. In this mode, she has less mix-up options and less Gatling options, but she does have access to defensive tools such as a DP and a body and head armor attribute stance. In this stance, she also gains the ability to plant the staff, which will then enter her into the staffless mode. In this mode, she will put the staff on the ground. It will remain where it is until she interacts with it again. In this mode, she loses the range on her normal attacks. However, they gain faster startup. She gets more Gatling options and mix-up options. She gains access to more mobility tools instead of the defensive options, such as a jump like this, and the ability to jump to her staff to reposition herself. She also gains access to more zoning and set play tools in this mode. So she has two staff sets. She has the vertical set, or the 5D set, where the staff will launch vertically up into the air and then boomerang back to Lychee. And then she has the 2D set, where it will launch across the floor and then boomerang back to Lychee. In both sets, the staff will fly until it reaches the opponent, and then it will go slightly past them and then come back to her. Different moves from the staff mode will place it in one of the two sets. So the moves that set them in the vertical set are 5D, 4D, J2D, Rinchan, and Subane. And then the ones that place it in the horizontal set are 2D, 6D, JD, and her Chinroto Super when you hold the drive button at the later portion of the Super. That covers the basics of the mode change and her staff at its core, so the next thing we're going to cover is the actual staff launch properties itself. So 5D is two hits. It has one hit on its way out and one hit on its way back. This does count as two separate instances of a staff launch, so if you clash the first hit of the projectile, when it does its return segment, it will reactivate as a second projectile with its own unique hitbox. So you will have to clash both of them, and if you block the first hit, then the second hit coming back will also have its own hitbox. This one does not uh, launch the opponent. It does hit twice, but it does not launch. The 2D set, or the horizontal set, hits only one time. However, it does launch the opponent, so that gives her more hit-confirm options. The 2D set, if the first hit of it whiffs, or if it whiffs on the way out, on its return, it will actually retain its hitbox. Like that right there. The direction that the staff launch is actually determined by a hidden mechanic. Basically, when you put the staff down on the ground, the direction of the screen that it will launch to is based on the opponent's position relative to the staff when it is set. So right here I did JD and the staff landed in front of the opponent and they are on the right side or the player 2 side. They are to the right of the staff and they are right to Lychee. They are on the right side of me as the player. So when I launch the staff, the staff is going to go to the right. Now I'm going to throw the staff behind them. They are to the right of me as the character, however they are to the left of the staff which means when I launch it, the staff is going to go to the left. This remains true even if you switch sides. So here I've thrown it over them, and they were to the left of the staff, but to the right of me. 
Now they're to the left of the staff and to the left of me, and so the staff will go to the left. This also happens if you get them to the other side of the staff. So I put it down and they were on the right of the staff, now they are on the left of the staff. So when I launch it, it's still going to go to the right. There is a way to change this. She has a couple of moves in Staffless that will replant the staff. The main two are Coat Gaishi, which is 623D, where she moves it forward, and 421D, where she moves it back. Not only does this count as replanting the staff to change the direction that it will launch, it also changes the orientation of the staff from vertical and horizontal. So here I've placed the staff in 5D set, so it's going to launch vertically. If you move it backwards with 421D, it changes it to a horizontal set, so it'll go across the ground. Likewise, if you set it in a horizontal set with 2D and move it forward, it will become a vertical staff launch. You can see where this counts as replanting the staff in this example, where I have it behind them, so it's going to come to the left. Now I'm going to move it to the left side of them by moving it back with Coat Gaishi, and now it's going to go to the right. The other attacks that count as replanting the staff are B and C from her staff stance, the one where she jumps on top of the staff, and half circle back B, and half circle back C. All of those moves count as replanting the staff. However, none of those have any effect on the vertical or horizontal direction of the staff. Only Coat has influence over that. She does have a couple of uh, attacks that ignore the launch direction, which is Shin Shin. It will always go in the direction of the opponent, and Kokushi will always go in the direction of the opponent. However, vertical and horizontal set do have effects over Shin Shin and Kokushi. The 5D set for Shin Shin will go up in the air, it does more hits and has more untackable time, and then the 2D set Shin Shin has less untackable time, but goes further across the ground. And then likewise, the 2D set of Kokushi does more ground hits and is useful as a set play tool for mix-up, and then the 5D set is a higher damage reversal option. She can use this to end combos for high minimum damage on the super, and she can also use it as a way to escape pressure situations. The other hidden mechanics for her staff is when she launches it, it causes the boomerang effect. You can change the directional influence on the staff by moving around with Lychee because it will always return to her position. So you can zone with this tool by throwing it out to cover airspace and then crouching to make it cover ground space. Likewise, if the person is jumping and you want to recover airspace, you can jump on the return portion and the staff will start coming up. That's true for both staff sets, so if you do a 2D set and jump in the air, you can cover a very large horizontal space this way as well. The other mechanics regarding the staff launch are when she blocks, the hitbox disappears and the staff enters a floating phase. And in this float phase, she is unable to use the staff attacks, as in she does not count, or she is not counted as having the staff back on her body. However, it is also not planted. So during this phase, it is still returning to her body, but she cannot interact with it except for doing a second staff launch. So here, you can see me launch it, and now I'm blocking, and the staff is floating back to her. When it's floating back, she can relaunch it though. Like that right there. The second mechanic with the staff launch is when she gets hit. If Lychee gets hit while the staff is returning, the staff will lose its hitbox, but it does not enter a float state. It instead will fly up into the air and then replant itself on the ground. Just like with the float state though, if she recovers from hit stun, she can relaunch the staff again. Um, during the launch of the staff, while it's airborne, she cannot interact with the staff again until it comes back to her or she gets hit or blocks. So during this, she cannot jump to the staff, she cannot move the staff with coat, she can't use Shin Shin or her supers. After she launches the staff, when it comes back to her body, she will re-equip it and then re-enter the staff mode. So. 
some of the hidden mechanics regarding staff is one of them is in the staff mode. A couple of normals, which are 6A, 2C, 5C, and 4B, are affected by not only dash momentum, but the staff placement of the previous normal they are used in a Gatling string. So, to give you an example of this, Light G6A, this is the base distance of where the staff hits. On all of Lenchi's staff attacks, she has a hitbox on her body, and she has a hitbox on the staff. So right here, this is the base distance where the staff hits on her 6A. If I do it from a dash, the staff actually hits closer to me because she is retaining dash momentum, but the staff is not. So it actually loses range during this. However, if I do it from a 2B, the staff actually gains a considerable amount of distance because the staff will activate from its previous position on the screen instead of Lychee's position on the screen. So the staff and Lychee actually are not counted as a single character, but rather two instances of the same character. So you can actually increase or decrease the range of Lychee's normals by moving around or using different Gatling options. So to give more examples of this, her 6A, you can actually make it kind of go across the screen by timing it properly before it comes back to her body. Likewise, it works with her 4B, which is her anti-air, like that right there, and then it also works with uh, 5C, which you can see there. 2C does not follow where the staff previously was, but it is affected by dash momentum. So you can see here that the staff is coming out where her fist is, and if you do it from a dash, it'll actually kind of come out behind her arm and lose a little bit of range. So one of the other hidden mechanics that she has is the forward dash staff launch. Um, usually a staff launch, you will do a full animation uh, to launch the staff. She can do it from a 5D, a 2D, and a JD. Um, after she launches these, she can actually cancel them into anything. She can cancel them into walk, she can cancel them into jump, she can cancel it into attacks, she can cancel it into anything after I want to say something around 17 frames. It may be a little less than that. I don't actually have the frame data on me right now. Um, JD, it's the same thing, however JD does have forced landing recovery. So upon touching the ground, she does enter a state where she cannot act out of anything and she is forced into a recovery state. And then the hidden one is, after reaching a certain distance threshold from her forward dash, she can actually launch the staff without using an animation, and it is a zero frame staff launch which looks like this. So one of the other kind of hidden mechanics she has with her staff is in her Gatling chains. So you can see here that she can do 5B into 2B, but she cannot do 5B, 2B, back into 5B. Likewise, she can do 5B, 2B staff list, but she cannot do 5B, 2B, 5B again. However, if she regains the staff in the middle of a block string or a Gatling string, she actually regains her Gatling options um, because they count as two separate moves. So here I'm going to launch the staff and then do 5B, 2B, and then do 5B again. So you can see right there, I did 5B, 2B, 5B, 2B. And that's because I re-equipped the staff on its way back and that reopened my Gatling options. Um, it does not remove the Gatling restriction on her Gatling table, so she can't reverse beat into anything that she would not normally be able to reverse beat into. It just allows her to use the same normal again in a block string within its already predetermined restrictions. And then lastly, there's her overdrive. Um, her overdrive functions kind of like a puppet character. So, let me put her health down. So similar to a puppet character like Carl, the staff works independently from her. Uh, it can be launched from neutral. It can be done at any point during an animation without her having to go into the staff launch animation. If you hit 5D, it will track the opponent, but it has slightly more startup. And if you actually manually input one of the eight directions, it will go in that direction and it has slightly faster startup. 
The other mechanic in her overdrive is it removes her Gatling restriction on her Gatling table and it allows her to use the same normal up to two times in a single chain, with the exception of 6C, which is this move, which has no Gatling options. It will end the Gatling chain. So to show you an example of this, normally she cannot do 6B into 6A, but in this she cannot only do it once, but she can use it twice. And that pretty much covers the entirety of her staff mechanic. Um, there are a couple of neat things that she can do, a couple of gimmicks, such as if you hold um, her Itsu stance, there's a portion during the recovery where she's counted as being staffless so she can launch the staff or she can set the staff. Which, it is a pretty tight window. Like that right there. And then during her float state, where the staff is coming back to her, she can actually launch it again. Which, I may have said that earlier. Uh, I've already forgotten to be honest. <laughs> So that you can see like that, she can actually throw the staff multiple times. And so that's pretty much it for her staff mechanic. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I feel like I might have, but if you have any questions, you can always feel free to ask me in the comment section, or you can find me on Twitter at UriUrifGC.